Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship experience, worship in the word. And certainly we thank God for each of you on today. We do honor God who is sovereign and supreme to his son, Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord, and to the Holy Ghost, who is our sustainer, our comforter, our leader, our teacher, and our guide. And to each of you in your respective places, we greet you with Jesus' joy and in divine love. Well, today is the last Sunday of the month of November. November has rapidly passed by us. Well, today, November 29th, is a special day uh, in my life uh, because my dad was born on November 29th. And uh, um, he would have been 107 years old on today. And he passed away at the age of 83. And also, his oldest son, which is my old, was my oldest brother, was born on November 29th. And he would have been 89 today, but he passed on last year. So uh, we just say eternal rest uh, for my father, my dad, and also for my oldest brother, Garfield Leland Sr. and Garfield Leland Jr. All right. Um, we like to call your attention today as we begin a series of messages uh, in regards to um, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so often we forget uh, why we are celebrating uh, in this season. We also hope and pray that you all have had a blessed Thanksgiving a week, a weekend, or Thanksgiving Day. And we hope and pray that everyone uh, remain safe and strong. Uh, so today we're going to start a series of messages uh, from uh, the theme, <clears throat> God Keeps His Promise. And uh, today's theme is preparing for the promise. Our theme for the next several weeks or next three or four weeks will be God Keeps His Promise. Our theme for today is preparing for the promise. And our subject for today is a prophetic promise in the midst of a pandemic. A prophetic promise in the midst of a pandemic. So I hope you got all of that. That's a bit much, uh, but we hope that you uh, that you got that. So we'd like to call your attention uh, to uh, the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, and we are going to begin reading at verse number 6. Very familiar passage of scripture to most of us and to all of those who are part of our ministry. We know that um, uh, it's been several times that I have preached and taught from uh, this passage of scripture. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. You will find these words recorded. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, verse 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now 
for allowing us to come together and allowing us this privilege and this opportunity. We ask now, God, that you release your power, your presence, your anointing upon this, your vessel, that I may preach and teach with power and with clarity. Anoint the ears, the hearts, the minds, the spirits of your children, that they may be receptive, that they may believe, explore, apply, and share this word. In advance, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise for us in Jesus' precious name that we pray. And every heart said, Amen. Today, I, we want to talk from these words, a prophetic promise in the midst of a pandemic. My brothers and my sisters, we must always remember that God, our Father, is still in charge regardless of what may be going on uh, in the world. And God will answer the cry or the call or the prayers of his children. He may not answer us uh, when we want him to, but as the old song says, he's always on time. So when we look at uh, what was going on before our Savior, Jesus the Christ, came to this world, there was literally a pandemic. Yes, perhaps many of us just found out or learned about a pandemic uh, in 2020, but a pandemic now, simply means a disease outbreak affecting an exceptionally high proportion of the population. Uh, before Jesus was born, there was a pandemic. It wasn't a, a physical disease, but it was a sin disease, a spiritual disease. And my brothers and sisters, when we have a spiritual disease, it always affects our soul and our body. So over 2,000 years ago, there was a pandemic. And God, yes, God our Father, he had a prophetic or he gave a prophetic word uh, in the midst of the pandemic. And we know, those of us who have studied the Bible, we know, uh, if you didn't know, there were 400 years uh, uh, after God had resisted to speak to man, 400 years passed before God sent Jesus Christ, his son. But in the meantime, the prophets were speaking and the prophets was foretelling and foretelling what thus says the Lord. Uh, so uh, uh, we find that before Jesus the Christ was born, uh, there was a prophetic word or a prophetic promise that God uh, uh, gave unto mankind uh, to let mankind know that the pandemic that was there would, would not be forever. He gave them a prophetic promise in the midst of their pandemic. So it is today. Yes, and we're not going to focus on the pandemic of 2020, uh, but we're going to focus on the pandemic that was going on in the world that caused God to send his only begotten son to pay man's sin debt. So, my brothers and my sisters, as we began to focus on the celebration of the birth of our Savior, 
Let us not forget that the birth of Christ was different from any other birth. There was nobody born like Christ. Before our Savior was born, it had been foretold by the prophets. The incarnation of Christ was prophesied repeatedly in the Old Testament. In our text today, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, <clears throat> the world, if you go back to chapter 8 and read from verse 22 uh, down to verse 20, uh, 20 down to verse 22, you will see that the world was in darkness. Yes, the world was in a pandemic. It was in a crisis and God spoke a prophetic promise through the prophet Isaiah. And I, as I examined this text, the first thing I discovered about this prophetic promise was the advent of Christ or the arrival or the coming of Christ. Isaiah was known as the civil tongue prophet and he prophesied about this Christ coming like 400 years or many years before Christ came. So the first thing I want us to notice is the advent or the arrival of Christ. Listen what the text says. It says in verse six, it says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now, here in this clause of chapter six, of, of verse six, excuse me, in this clause of verse six, here is the first advent of Christ, his birth on earth. From these words of this text, we notice, first of all, watch this, the doctrine in his coming or the instructions in his coming. Now, remember, Isaiah was a prophet. And so when he began to forth and foretell about what was going to happen, uh, he, he had some instructions. What bothers me today that we have so many prophets who are saying stuff, but there are no there is no doctrine to back up what they say. There is no instructions. But 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 God gave Isaiah a prophecy. But in the midst of that prophecy was doctrine was instruction. The doctrine. Watch this. The doctrine of the dual nature of Christ is seen in our Text in that both, watch this, the deity or the divinity and humanity of Christ are found in this prophecy of the coming or the arrival of Christ. Listen what it says again. I'm trying to drive this home. A child is born. That speaks of the humanity of Christ. But he also says a son is given, which speaks of the deity or the divinity of Christ. A child is born, says Christ's humanity had a beginning. But a son is given, says that Christ, the person, already was in existence when his birth occurred. He was already in existence. Now that means that Christ was a bad man. Mm -hmm. The born in the text or the born part only concerns his manifestation in the flesh. Uh-huh. But the given in the text or the, in the part, covers all eternity. Born, manifestation in the flesh, given, 
covers all eternity. I know you're saying, what are you talking about? Well, watch this. The gift had to exist before it was given. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the dual nature of Christ being recorded together is or should be a great encouragement to all of mankind. Why do I say that? Well, because it tells us that Christ is not so heavenly, uh-huh, that he is no earthly help. Did you get that? He is not only God of heaven, but he's also God of the home. He's not just God up there, but he's also God down here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so now he, he, he actually is the object of our worship as well as the example of our walk. Mm, I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our text is an example of what is seen often in Scripture, in the Word of God, namely the two natures of Christ being found in the text. He was 100% human, but he was also 100% divine. Yeah, yeah. And as a human, he got in a boat with his disciples and went to sleep. But in his divinity, he got up and he calmed the raging sea. As a human, he wept at the grave of Lazarus. But in his divinity, he called Lazarus from the grave. Yes, Christ is God's way to man, but he's also man's way to God. Not only do we notice the doctrine or the instructions in his coming, secondly, I want us to notice the demotion. Demotion in his coming. Now, most of us, we like promotion, but we don't too much like demotion. But, but, but let's look at the demotion in Christ's coming to earth. Now, remember, we, we are talking from the theme preparing for the promise. And our subject today is a prophetic promise in the midst of a pandemic. There was a pandemic going on in the world before Christ came. It was a widespread of sin. So now the second thing I want us to notice is the demotion. <clears throat> Listen what it says again. We're still in verse 6 and we still with the first clause of verse 6 of the text. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now, the incarnation, which simply meaning Christ became flesh, the incarnation of Christ was a great condescension for Christ. In other words, he yielded from his superior rank. You got to understand that Christ was sitting on the right hand of his father. But because of the pandemic, the sins of the world or the sins of mankind that began to stink in the nostrils of God. So Christ uh, uh, demoted himself. Uh huh. He yielded. From superior rank. In other words, the, 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 the ancient of days became an infant in days. The everlasting father is a son given. Are you with me? Such was his condescension. In taking our nature upon him, thus did he humble and empty himself, demotion. 
So, if Christ would humble himself so greatly in order to save our souls, then we ought to be willing to humble ourselves if necessary in order to serve him. So we see in Christ's coming, this prophetic promise in the midst of a pandemic, Christ's coming, his, his advent, his arrival on earth, we see the doctrine in his coming, and we also notice the, the demotion in his coming. Now watch this. The third thing I notice, and I want us to notice, is the dark days of his coming. You see, my brothers and sisters, the prophecy was given during the dark days. And Christ was born in the midst of the dark days. The dark days, it was dark days because of the sins of the world that had begun to stink in the nostrils of God. So it was the dark days and Christ was born in the midst of those dark days. The dark days were days of Herod who were very dark and dangerous. So Isaiah, the prophet, he spoke a word in the midst of dark days, in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of a crisis. Although there, although there was demotion in his coming, and dark days in his coming. Thirdly, I want us to notice the delight in Christ's coming. Yes, there were demotion. He gave up his superior rank. There were dark days because the world was in turmoil. But now we are going to notice the delight in Christ's coming. We're still in verse 6 and the A clause. A child is born. A, a son is given. Now both child is born and son is given provide great delight. Why do I say that? Well, Let's look at delight in the word born. My brothers and my sisters, the birth of a child, think with me now, is a time of great rejoicing. Now, I know what you're saying, women, that is it's painful. But after the child comes, after the birth of the child, it is is a time of great rejoicing. So what great joy the birth of Christ has given to humanity, to mankind. Uh-huh. So it was delight in the child being born. But secondly, there was delight in the son given, given. Mm -hmm. Because, watch this, the gift of God's son Brought delight. Yeah. Because his son was born. God was made flesh and dwell among men. Brought delight. So Isaiah was prophesizing about this. This the savior coming years and many years before he appeared on the scene. So we have noticed the advent of Christ, the arrival or the coming of Christ. So secondly, I want us to notice the attributes of Christ. Let's look at verse 6 of the last clause of verse 6 or the last clauses of verse 6. Listen what it says. And the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, 
the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Now, these great names given to Christ, it shows some of the great attributes or characteristics of Christ. They distinguish Christ as the superior being. He is superior. He is supreme. Yeah, uh-huh. So Isaiah says, as he gives him, uh, as he gives us the first characteristic of Christ, he says that he should be called wonderful. Now, those of us who've had some experience with Christ, we know that he is wonderful. But Isaiah talked about him he being wonderful before he ever got here. You see, every redeemed soul finds Christ as wonderful. To be wonderful. He is wonderful in his incarnation. He's wonderful in his love. He's wonderful in his sacrifice on the cross in his saving and keeping power, Christ is wonderful. So Isaiah said, as he gave this prophetic word in the midst of a crisis, that he is wonderful. His name shall be called wonderful. Then he says, counselor. He comes to us as a revealer of the Father's will. Christ is the great counselor. Oh, yes, he is. He is the greatest counselor of all. He gives us the best counseling through his word and through our communication with him in our prayers and our supplications. Then Isaiah say, he is the mighty God. Christ is mighty. He's powerful, all powerful. He did say that all power is in my hand. He is, he is powerful. Nothing is impossible with Christ. Then Isaiah says, he is the everlasting father. He's the father of eternity. He eternally exists. He is the head, watch this, and he's also the helper of the redeemed. He is head of the church. He helps his children with his love, his guidance, and his provisions. Then Isaiah says, he's the prince of peace. Christ gives us, watch this, peace with God. He gives us the peace of God, and he also gives us the peace from God. So when Christ was born, the angels on the hillside announced on earth peace and goodwill toward men. So in this prophetic promise in the middle or in the midst of the crisis that were, 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 were going on over 2,000 years ago before Christ came on the scene, we noticed the advent of Christ. We noticed the, the, the coming or the arrival of Christ. We noticed the attributes of Christ as Isaiah speaks. But now let's notice the authority of Christ. 
Let's look at the latter part of verse 6 and verse 7. Listen what it says. We're actually going to start at the B clause of verse 6. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Now let's go down to verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from, from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Christ will do it. So now we want to notice the authority of Christ. The prophecy in our text of the incarnation of Jesus Christ goes all the way from the cradle to the crown. Listen, it covers both the first and second advent or coming of Christ. The first advent had the cross in view. His first coming had the cross in view. In view. The second advent focused on the crown. A child is born. A son is given. Literally point to the first advent while the government shall be upon his shoulder, which is in the B clause of verse 6, points to the second advent of the second coming. The authority, stay with me now, the authority of Christ is especially seen in the government. The text says in verse 6, the B clause, that the government shall be, shall be upon his shoulder. So that lets us know, saints, that be, before a, a Christ rule is more, it lets us know, actually, Christ rule is more than a possibility. Christ's rule is a certainty. Because the words of the text says, shall be. And shall be is the divine command that orders and assures that Jesus Christ will rule and reign. Shall be, meaning it's going to happen. Uh huh. So when God says, shall be, it is as good as done. So our text also gives great comfort to God's people about the future. You see, my brothers and sisters, God's blessed promises can be a source of great comfort to God's people. Even in what we are going through over 2,000 years since Jesus came on the scene, God promises they are still good. Are you with me? Now, the text also instructs us that Christ will carry the government with the excellent character of his government. Watch, watch that. Let me, I mean, let me read that again. Let me say that again because I, I don't want you to miss it. Christ will carry the government with the excellent characteristics of 
his government. And you see, his government will be better and more successful than the world's government. His government is going to be better and more successful than America's government. Thank you, Lord. Christ's government has some characteristics attached to it that I want you to get. First of all, Isaiah is really saying that Christ's government will be progressive. It will be steady advancing. Uh-huh. Look at verse 7. Of the increase of his government, his government will be progressive. The increase of his government, there shall be no end. That's what the text says. The largeness, luster, and length of Christ's government shall increase. So Christ's government is going to be progressive. But secondly, it will also be peaceful. Look at the text. It says, peace there shall be no end. When Christ rules, and when we allow him to rule, the entire world will be at peace. See, we want peace in the midst of this crisis that we are presently going in, or that we are presently in, then we need to let Christ rule. If he rules uh -huh, in the world, there will be peace. Christ's government will be peaceful. But thirdly, his government will be prudent, judicious. Listen to what it says in the text, in verse 7, upon his kingdom to order it. Now what does that mean? Well, hang on. To order it speaks of the, the efficient organization of Christ's administration of his kingdom. You see, you don't have to worry about Christ having a bad administration. It's all good. But in the world and in our nation, we have bad administration that causes things to be unjust. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, Christ speaks or his order speaks of the efficient organization of Christ's administration of his kingdom. Everything is and shall be well managed in the kingdom of Christ. So, we can say it like this. Where Christ rules, there will always be order. When things are out of order, whether it's in our country or in our relationships or family, well, a part of that then there will be no order. But if Christ is in that, there will always be order. So Christ's government will be progressive. It will be peaceful. It will be prudent. But it will also be pure. Because the text says in verse 7, to establish it with judgment and with justice. So Christ's government 
will be pure. Mm -hmm. Christ's government also will be perpetual, which simply means everlasting. No end. The text says in verse 7, from henceforth and forevermore. Or forever. Do you see that? So, so, so get this. Don't miss this. The rule of Christ will never end. So Isaiah was prophetically giving the world, especially Israel, giving them the prophecy of the uh, power of God and the promise of God in the midst of their crisis or pandemic. So he says his government will be <clears throat> progressive, peaceful, prudent, pure, perpetual. But then as I come close to an end, he says that Christ's government will be powerful. It's in the last clause of verse seven. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. God will perform this. Mm -hmm. Now, at beginning of the government of Christ in this prophecy, we read in verse six, shall be. Here, at the end of our text, we read, will perform this. Are you with me? God will perform this. Even with, don't miss this, even with the opposition to the reign of Christ, even with those who are opposing what Christ has done and what he is doing, it will take great power to overcome the forces and the influences of evil and bring to pass shall be and will perform. That simply means that there are going to be some opposition. There are going to be some uh, uh, obstructions. There are going to be some opponents. But the word of God says shall be and it will be performed. And it will happen because although we have to face the evils of this world, we have to face the maladies, the diseases, the, the pandemics and the crises and all of that. Although we have to face all of those things, but the government of Christ is powerful. Mm -hmm. The government of Christ has the power to get us beyond our situations and circumstance. I got to hurry. I'm running out of time. The power is found in the text, in the zeal of the Lord. This guarantees his government. This guarantees his government coming to pass. It's going to happen. This zeal of the Lord of hosts will overcome, watch this, will overcome all oppositions and opponents. Isn't that good news? That's shouting music right there. Great zeal, my brothers and sisters, great zeal produces great power. Did you get that? Great zeal produces great power. So my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate 
the birth of our Lord and Savior, remember that there was great preparation before he came the first time, before he was born in the tiniest of townships, Bethlehem, in the city of David. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, Isaiah prophesied several hundred years prior to Jesus coming on the scene. So, with that, with us knowing now because we are New Testament Christians, that the promise of God, the prophetic promise that Isaiah spoke, it is still alive and well today. So what we really would desire and we really hope that God's people had more zeal for the work, the worship, and the witness for Christ. I would hope and pray that the people of God will be fired up with zeal and their exploits for Christ will be greater. Yes, if the zeal of God is in you, if the zeal of God is for you, no enemy can overcome Regardless of how bad the situation is, because in the text, Isaiah was talking about the, the present time and even the coming time of what was happening and what was going to happen in the land in those days. Man sin was sticking in the nostrils of God and there was darkness and doom. So Isaiah spoke a word of prophecy, a word of promise in the midst of that pandemic when the sins was running rampant. So it is today. So as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ in the midst of a pandemic, remember, remember this, my brothers and my sisters, God's promise is still good. God will do what he said he would do. Mm -hmm. Because God's word, I believe it. God's word is true. If God said it, you can bank on it. Whatever he promised, he is able to perform. So make sure that even in the midst of this pandemic that's going on in the world today, remember that it was a pandemic going on uh, thousands of years ago and God, our Father, he released his promise. And that's why we're celebrating this 
season because in due time, the promise did show up and we'll deal with that the rest of this of uh, these series of messages. So if he promised it, he will perform it. So hang on in there with God. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. God will do it and he'll do it for you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now for this word on today, reminding us of a prophetic promise or a prophetic word in the midst of a pandemic or in the midst of a crisis. We pray now, God, that this word will sink deeply into our hearts, minds, and our spirits, that we become better, better Christians, better disciples, better ambassadors of yours, and that we'll love you and love our brother, our fellow man. We thank you for your word on today. And we pray for those who may not know you in the pardon of their sins, may not have ever received the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. We pray now, God, if they're listening or watching on today, that they would get to know the savior, that they would get in a hurry to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And if you are listening today or watching, if you would just pray this prayer with me or repeat after me, Lord God, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. I need salvation. I believe that you are the son of God. You died for my sins and God the Father raised you for my redemption. Come into my heart. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. If you pray that prayer on today, I believe that you are saved according to the word of God. Because the word of God says, he that calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you believe that, I, what I want you to do, I want to encourage you to connect with some Bible teaching, Bible believing church. And if you need our assistance, you can call Innovation Baptist Church 850-575-0818 and someone will help you along the way. And maybe you're listening and you are saved, but you are backslidden. You have walked away from the presence of the Lord and you know that it's time to come back. The Lord is married to the backslider. He's waiting on you to return unto him. So if you would do that today, don't put it off. Uh, don't put it off. Don't put time off. Just do it now. And do it as quickly as possible. And if you need help with that, with your recommitments, you can call our church as well. Or log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org, and someone will help you along the way. Well, my brothers and sisters, we thank you for sharing with us on today. God bless you and keep you. And if you want a replay of this message, you can... Um, Log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org, and you can get the replay and you can share it with someone else if you so desire. Remember that our midweek service has been postponed until January 6th. We're giving you a chance to be with your families and enjoy your family. No midweek service, no Wednesday night service, uh, but we will be back on Sunday morning, uh, 9.30 a.m. for worship with Worship in the word. Amen. So may God bless you. May God keep you. Certainly is our prayer.